Welcome to homicide housing, killer hell with shit is real Where robberies turn homicides to get a meal The young niggas that's on the grind is gripping still Living by the one rule of the hood, killer be killed Killer hell really play those rocks Like fresh on the corner really take those shots Jay was a dude that weighed about 100 pounds, man, soaking wet but right now we'll fight the Incredible Hulk to the end. Jay was a person that he can just go anywhere. And there was a lot of places you couldn't go out here because we all had our own personal problems. Yeah. They all had their own personal problems going up. But once you went with Jay, yeah. you knew you were safe. You can go have a good time. Jay Love was a little man. That was a little, a little ninja. Yeah. He was a little ninja, a little notable little ninja at an early age. He was known on Staten Island. You don't mess with Jay. He pull out that knife, he gonna stick you. September 6th will be my son's birthday. Yeah. He would have been 42 years old. Two months before Jay death, I had a brother. Jay found my brother on the rooftop there. And my brother always say, when I go, I'm taking your son. And that's when the visions start to come in. And uh, two months later, they killed my son. I remember um, looking out my window, they used to have a uh, recreation type of thing at school after hours that just to give the kids something to do. And when they came home, when they were walking down the street, I, I, I normally looked out the window to see who was out there. We was all walking off the block, everybody, because the police told us, you know, they had to shut down the music. So everybody's walking off the block on both sides of Park Hill Street. And everybody just like stopped on the corner, 225, you know, it was packed, everybody's walking, talking, everything. And firecrackers was going off and on. So he wasn't paying attention, he wasn't thinking it was gunshots, because all during that he was having firecrackers. So uh, firecrackers were going on, shooting and everything like that. Jay's in the middle of the street. Then all of a sudden Jay comes behind me and goes in 240. In front of, like on the side of 240, he got like three steps. And he just came down, he just fell down. But still nobody paid it no mind. Until you heard, you know, females screaming, ah, oh. then everybody looked, and Jay on the floor. I'm like, what happened to Jay? Find out, he got shot. And a guy is clever to be shooting at a time on the 4th of July where nobody's gonna pay attention. Anybody could have got killed. When I got to the elevator, I buckled. I buckled. I knew something happened. I did that 141. When I got upstairs and took off my clothes, my son was coming to the door and say, Ma, Jay got shot, he's dead. No, Jay just got shot. I always ran for my children. This time I couldn't run no more. It's like slow, slow motion. I knew my son was going when I buckled. When I buckled. And uh, it was just like, crushing to the whole neighborhood. You know, nobody knew who shot him, but he died and nobody thought that that would happen. Like, he was invincible. You know, and when he passed, man, it was, it was quiet. Nobody said nothing, nobody talked. It was just a hush. That hush continues to this day. The person responsible for killing Jay Love remains a mystery. To know because Park Hill was so conflicted back then, I would hate for it to have been somebody that sat down at my mother's table. Yeah. I would hate for it to be somebody at my mother's clothing. And we brought a lot of people home. Jay has to be the one of the first people we've seen in Park Hill die over gun violence or the shooting era. Because that growing up, it was more of a knife fighting thing. The gun thing wasn't really serious at that time as we was growing up. I mean, that really took a toll and that really set like, there is now, there's going to be gunplay in Park Hill. Well, growing up in the projects, you know, we get frustrated for a lot of various things. And one of them was having no money. And that, that, that triggered you doing what you're doing. You're playing dice. You're going out the path mall, you know. And eventually, those little hustles turn to the major hustle. That, you know what I mean, we got into the drug traffic. I say it came out 86, 
maybe 87, 85 to 87 that came. But when it came, it was a small thing. It wasn't a big thing because you would get arrested for crack on you and the cops would let you go because they didn't know what it was. They were used to cocaine or marijuana, weed, cheaper. You get caught that, you were getting locked up. There was incidents when people in Park Hill was getting locked up with crack and they would let go because the cops didn't know what it was at the time. Then, after, <laughs> then overnight, it was just crazy. <laughs> By the late 80s, drug dealing quickly replaced summer youth as a source of income for the young men of Park Hill. The results would be more devastating than they could ever imagine. They used to see young white boys come down there and they find their father's cars or their cars or who cars that buy drugs right across the street in 140. It was such an increase of people from the outside coming in and buying drugs that it made it even worse. It made it worse for the people that lived there. It made it worse for people that didn't know anything about Park Hill. Only thing you knew was Park Hill, oh my goodness, this bad, drug-ridden place. People moms that you've seen was on drugs, doing stuff that I don't want to say. You know what I mean? You see a people mother that you grew up, you ain't dinner at their house, and their moms are doing, I'll, I'll do this for you, I'll do that for you to get that drug. If she got that $10, you know what I'm saying, that five dollars to body Jones, you got this, you got this G pack, you gotta finish this G pack to get paid. If she comes up with her money, here you go. You know what I'm saying? Pregnant lady, here you go. Cause your moral shit is out the window, so in essence, your innocence is gone. Crack is one of the worst drugs I ever seen. And I saw something yesterday called embalming fluid that a young man just went around the corner was talking to me five minutes and came back and he looked just like a zombie. A lot of people want to find excuses why, you know, they can't succeed. You know, my mom on the crack and this, I had all these problems. I think those things should be a, should be a motivational thing. You know, if my mom was on crack, I'd be like, shit, I don't want to be that way. I'm talking about Lex. I'm talking about his brother Rob. I'm talking about Black. Black was the man out here. Right. Even though all them little cowards, they snitched storming on him or whatever, whatever. But Black was the man. Black used to do a lot of things in the community. Black used to, them dudes was like, this is like when uh, 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 Corky and all of them. Right. You know, when Corky and all of them lived in, when Corky and them was living out there in Manus Harbor, he right. had his little brother and all them. They was running around here doing a little robbery. Right, That's they came and robbed Jay. the wrong spot. Exactly. Right. This is when Larry and all of them, this is when Price and all of them had 220 and all of that. Right. This was our block right here. I'm talking about, I used to come out here at a young age, at 14 years old, right. and get like six, seven thousand dollars instantly. Right. Right here on these blocks right here.